about movement in and out of the cell. So needless to say, it's really important that all sorts of nutrients, oxygen and carbon dioxide are able to get into the cell and get out of the cell. So today we're going to focus on that. So we're going to first talk about the cell membrane. You can think of the cell membrane as a fluid mosaic model. In other words, there's two layers of phospholipids. And remember we talked about lipids earlier. And phospholipids were the type of uh, macromolecule where you have on one end a polar side and the other a non-polar side. And within that phospholipid bilayer, you have proteins. And these are embedded into the bilayer. And what they allow to do is they can be a channel or a pump through which you can have bigger types of macromolecules make their way through the membrane. Now carbohydrates act as chemical identification cards. And so what they do is they'll come, th they will actually be able to help identify what's coming through. So methods of transportation across the cell membrane include different types. One is passive transport. And this is one we've been focusing on thus far. And that includes diffusion or osmosis. And of course, diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And then osmosis is a special kind of diffusion where we're just looking at water. Then we have facilitated transport and active transport. And we'll talk about these in a bit. So with passive transport, you have no energy required. Make sure you get that part down. You have these three kinds of transport, and the one passive transport does not require energy. As you can see in the diagram, you just have a flow of area of high concentration into an area of low concentration. So those purple dots are there and they are highly concentrated on one side and you can see the direction they are flowing because they are moving from that area of high concentration to low concentration. They also are flowing in the other direction. See that, see the arrow at the bottom? However, the net flow or the overall movement is still in the direction of high to low concentration. So molecules move from high concentration to low concentration to reach what we call equilibrium. Equilibrium, you can see equa, referring to equal, and that means that that is when you have concentration that is equal on both sides. And this depends on the concentration of the materials from either side. And it depends on the permeability of the membrane. Some su substances can impact the membrane and others can. So that will affect how the movement exists. In the case of osmosis, this is a kind of diffusion that requires no energy, so make sure with osmosis you write down it. It's a kind of passive transport, and it requires no energy, and it's the diffusion of water molecules through a selectively permeable membrane. And water goes from, an, from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. So the way to think of that is the water is in it goes from an area of high concentration. So in the low salt concentration, you have a high concentration of water. But in the high salt concentration, you have a low concentration of water. So the water moves from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water. And that's why you're seeing that those arrows moving in that direction. Now, an example of osmosis are blood cells. And here's an example of blood cells. And our blood cells that were shown here, this is going to be an example of animal cells. So animal cells and, and are going to have a certain type of situation or certain type of amount of water that they're going to like to be in or a certain type of relationship of how, uh, how, much, how filled they like to be with their water versus plant cells. So our blood cell is our example of an animal cell. So here's our osmosis. If the uh, blood cell is put in what we call an isotonic solution. That means that this, the concentration of water outside the cell is the same as the concentration inside the cell. Make sure to get down that, that vocabulary word, isotonic. So the concentration of water inside and outside the cell are the same. And in that case, there's movement, but there's no net flow of water in one direction or, or another. And that would be at and equilibrium. The second example is a hypertonic uh, solution. Okay, so 
There you see kind of that lumpy cell in the middle, and it's in a hypertonic medium. Hypertonic means that it is highly concentrated with salts, or hyper is above, okay? So it's, ab it's above the normal concentration. And in that case, the water will move out of the cell and go into the hypertonic solution. And you can see what's happening to the, hyper the cell in the hypertonic solution. It's shriveling down. So make sure that you get the vocabulary word hypertonic, um, that it's a salty solution, and that the, um, and it doesn't just have to be salty, it's highly concentrated solution, and that the water will leave the cell, that's the action, the water will leave the cell and go into the environment when that's the case. Then there's a hypotonic solution, and in this case you have a low salt solution, so this would be pure, pure water with absolutely no salt in it. Di um, so DI water would be the case of this, deionized water. And if this is the case, then the solution uh, inside the cell is saltier than that outside the cell. And in which case, water will move from the environment, from this hypotonic solution, into the cell. And in this case, the cell will expand and it can even burst. So when you're doing your egg experiment, you want to compare these stages to what you're going to do as well. And it, later on, I'll be showing you how osmosis works in your kitchen. So, the next thing we're going to look at is facilitated diffusion. R look at this. Facilitated diffusion, no energy is required in this either. But, unlike these gradients that we're working on by themselves, in facilitated diffusion, we have a process that uses a channel molecule, a protein, to transport a substance into the cell through the cell membrane. So, the, the light blue area, the cell membrane, those are the phospholipids. And then those green proteins that are going all the way across the, the membrane, those are the channel proteins. And the channel protein opens and closes to let substances across. And there ha does have to be a concentration difference. So there is a diffusion difference that it's working with. Facilitated diffusion, again, requires no energy. Make sure you get that down. Facilitated diffusion requires no energy. When I put something in big letters like that, you'll want to make sure to focus on that. One example is a carrier protein. In the carrier protein, it'll change shapes to let the substance, substances across the membrane. And you can see how that's working outside the cell. It's more concentrated, and so it's the square Pro, uh, as, uh, square aspect of that protein is letting the substance in and then it's crossing through the channel protein uh, or carrier protein and carrying it to the other side. The next type of transport is active transport. An active transport, here's the difference, requires energy. So make sure you get that into your, um, your notes that active transport does require energy. So, here we have a picture of active transport happening. And you'll notice that hydrogen, that's at H+, plus, is being moved from an area of low concentration. That's that one single little hydrogen is over there. And it's moving against the gradient to an area of high concentration. Well, as you might guess, that would require energy because you're going to need energy to move against the concentration gradient. So this is the opposite of how diffusion would naturally go, and so that the little box in there with the yellow um, kind of star looking thing saying ATP. ATP, those are your energy packets. And we're going to be learning more about them. But ATP is used, or energy is used, to activate that proton pump such that the hydrogen can be moved against the concentration gradient. And this process requires energy. There are many types of active transport, and one co common type of protein used uh, in this is a transport protein. 